Today, we are looking at two new cameras from HD Zero. We have the Nano Version 3 and the Micro Version 3. And these cameras not only improve upon what HD Zero has done before, they also bring us new proper support for features such as 1080p mode. Now, what we're going to do in this video is take a closer look at these cameras, walk you through their features and specifications, share with you some footage and thoughts, and hopefully give you an idea of what they're like. Now, just to be clear, HD Zero did send me both of these cameras over for free. However, they have not seen this video before it's been published. They've not paid me to make this video. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Just before we move forward, I need to confirm that this is the second revision of this video that I have published. The initial video has been taken down due to there being an issue with the latency testing results. Initially, I found the latency on the Micro V3 being higher than the Micro V2. It turns out this was as a result of our test method and wasn't actually correct. It seems the Micro V3 is a lot more sensitive than the previous cameras, and as a result of the way we do our latency testing by shining an LED into the camera lens and measuring the time between it shining on the camera and the shining on the display, it was actually overloading the sensor and causing some issues. After further investigation and doing some tweaks to the latency testing method, we've now been able to stop this happening and get true results from this camera. Just to be clear, this has not had any effect on any of our other latency testing on HD Zero cameras or any other cameras. Whilst we have seen this phenomenon in the past on other HD Zero cameras, it has been very rare and we have experienced excluded that from the data set. However, on the version 3, it was basically happening all the time. And as a result of that, we had to include it in the data. And at the time, we actually thought it was a problem with the camera and not the latency testing method. One final note I just want to add is the tweak that we've done to the latency testing method is as simple as reducing the amount of light that was shining into the camera lens. And as a result of that, no longer overloading the sensor. And that's now given us correct results. OK, to start, we're going to look at the new Micro V3. Now, this is a very interesting camera for me. This one is optimized for 16 by 9 aspect ratio and is designed to be used with the new HD Zero goggles. It supports the 720p 60 mode, but also fully supports the new 1080p 30 mode, giving you full 16 by 9 field of view with no vignetting in either modes. There is no need to swap the lens on this camera, and you would call this HD Zero's first proper 1080p 30 camera that they have made. Now, this camera is fitted with a half-inch sensor with a native resolution of 1920 by 1080. That means in the 1080p mode, you're getting that full native resolution. In 720p 60, though, you're getting an oversampled image, which is actually going to give you a higher quality than what you was getting on the native 720p cameras before. As a result of the changes in the sensor, it has sharper optics as well as better low light performance. And this is going to be the best camera option for people flying general freestyle, slower flying that 1080p 30 mode where you want the best possible image quality. Now, as you can see, it is a 19 by 19 camera, so it means it is going to fit into pretty much most standard frame sizes. And also in the back of the pack, they include the back plate, which you can fit on to make sure the back end of the camera is protected. Now, for me, it is great to see HD Zero bring a proper 1080p camera for the HD Zero system. I'm looking forward to seeing this on that new 1080p 30 mode, which we'll take a look at a little bit more later on. Next, moving over to the Nano V3. Now, whilst the other camera is the one I'm most interested in as a result of that 1080p mode, there's still a lot to like here. Now, this is the third version of the HD Zero Nano camera, and there's quite a lot of changes here. Now, this camera has been designed and optimized for a 4x3 aspect ratio, but it can be configured for 16x9 as well. In fact, it has two options in 16x9. You have a 16x9 crop, which is going to give you a full field of view, and that's the idea deal view in a 16 by 9 but there is also a full native 16 by 9 but you will get vignetting on that mode simply as a result of the wide field of view this camera has an increased field of view over the version 2 94 degrees compared to 89 and it has new sharper optics as well as a reduced weight and in fact hd0 say it is half as heavy as the previous versions Going over the main specs on this camera, again, it has that half inch sensor with a native resolution of 720p 60 in 4x3, a rolling shutter, and weighs 2.2 grams. 
It, now it is a 14 by 16 by 14 camera, which means if you're gonna use it in larger frames, you are going to need to have an adapter. However, this is really designed for the likes of whoops and small aircraft. And again, they've managed to get that weight down even further at just 2.2 grams. Now what I'm gonna do is install the new micro cam into my HD0 test build. Now this is the one that does have the new HD0 Freestyle Version 2 VTX in the back. This is one that I do use as sort of a test build for HD0. It does tend to get thrown around and it definitely has the odd crash as you can see there. However, what I wanna do is use this just to give you an idea of the kind of footage that you can get from that new micro camera because I think it's going to be very popular with people looking to put it in things like long range quads, but also maybe even planes and wings. Now for the remainder of this video, we're gonna concentrate on the Micro Version 3. I'm gonna be covering the Nano Version 3 in a future video. What we're gonna do next is walk you through the menu options that are on the new Micro Version 3 camera, and I'll also show you the differences in aspect ratios that are available, as well as the modes here in the studio. Okay, now just to walk you through the main options that are available on this camera, if we go into the main menu at the top, the first thing you'll find is the profiles option. Then below this, we have the camera brightness setting, sharpness, contrast and saturation, as well as shutter mode, white balance mode, and then the individual white balance settings. We have a HV flip option, which allows us to rotate the camera 180 degrees if yours is upside down. We've got our max gain settings, our LED mode, and then our video mode. Now at the moment, you can see we're set to 1080p 30, but we can switch this through to four by three, 16 by nine crop, 16 by nine full, and then back to 1080p. It is worth noting that the 16 by 9 full is the normal 720p 60 frames a second mode, whether that be in the full or the crop, whereas 1080p 30 is obviously as it's labelled. Now, just to show you some footage from these actual modes in the workshop here, we are in the normal 16 by 9 full mode, which is 720p 60 frames a second. We can then switch it into that 1080p 30 mode. That obviously gives you the bump in resolution, but obviously it halves the frame rate. And I'll talk a bit more of the effect of that a little bit more later on in the video. Then you can switch it in to 16 by nine crop. This is a zoomed in image compared to what we have on either the 1080p 30 or the 16 by nine full, which is 720p. This again is 720p resolution. It's just taking a crop of the sensor to give you that more narrower field of view. Finally, you then have the 4x3 mode, which is available as well. Again, 720p. Now, just to give you a bit of a comparison between the 720p and the 1080p modes, I've laid them up here side by side, just to give you an overview of the difference in resolution. It is clear that there is a substantial difference once you start looking at the image. And just to demonstrate this a little bit more, if I now zoom in, you can see even more how much it is able to actually resolve. You can see looking at the picture in the top right hand corner in each of the images you can see on the 1080p mode that you can actually make out some of the lines the wording on the front of the printer the filament whereas on the 720p one everything's just a little bit more mushy Next, moving on to latency. Now there's a bit to understand here because the 30 frames a second mode is going to have quite a dramatic effect on latency. It's going to affect both the first pixel time, but also the full frame time as well. For instance, a standard frame at 60 frames a second is about 16 milliseconds, whereas that doubles to 33 milliseconds when we move up to 30 frames a second mode. There's also the effect of the camera on the system as well, because not all things are equal. And I'll explain that a bit more now as we take a look at this chart. Now, if you saw the first version of this video, the chart you're going to see now is different. That is as a result of the latency testing change that I made. Unfortunately, the initial results that I published were not accurate. And as a result of that, I've gone back and redone all of the testing and republishing that data now in an updated version of this video. The data you're seeing here is correct. As you can see on the 1080p 30 mode, you're seeing a dramatic increase in latency over the 720p modes. That is completely normal, exactly what we would expect expect 
for a slower frame rate. However, if we look at this camera in the 720p modes, the Vision 3 is basically the same as the Vision 2 now, and although it isn't quite as quick as the Nano 90, it certainly isn't a huge difference between them. What's obviously clear is that there is a difference between the 720p 60 modes and the 1080p 30 with latency. Obviously the frame time increases to about 33-34 milliseconds in itself compared to 16 milliseconds at 60 frames a second. And there is some additional first pixel latency as well, simply due to the way the sensor is having to read out slower and the point it's going to refresh compared to the goggles display. And as a result of that you're getting some increase, but I don't think these numbers are terrible. In my tests, in my flights, yes, you can feel the latency in 30 frames a second, but I think what this camera is going to be really good for is wing use, long range use, where people are wanting that better image quality compared to the lower latency. And I still firmly believe that, you know, 40 milliseconds isn't terrible for anyone who isn't racing. It's only when you get to sort of 70 or 80 milliseconds when you're talking fixed wing use will you start to feel it. Obviously, if you're smashing it around a bando, you're going to feel that increased latency. But general flying, 40, 50 milliseconds is absolutely fine. Now what I'm going to do next is share with you some footage from the micro camera in 1080p mode. I haven't got as much as I would like. The weather here has been horrific. I only actually had one day of flying where I was doing a lot of my testing and that ended up being the footage that I'm going to show you here today. I've tried to keep it as simple and as straight as possible just to try and demonstrate how the camera looks in real world with regards to slow, straight flying and really demonstrating what 1080p has to offer. Then I'll come back and talk a bit more about my experience, especially with it in 1080p 30 mode.
Okay, now just to share with you some quick final thoughts on this new Micro Version 3 camera. Now, as I've said, I'm going to be looking at the Nano separately in a future video. Now, with regards to this camera and 1080p, I have zero complaints. It's really great to see a dedicated 1080p camera from HD Zero that doesn't require a new lens, doesn't require messing around. You can switch it between 720p and 1080p and have no issues with vignetting and other things like that. And overall, the image quality bump is really really good to see. There is no question that there is more detail in the 1080p mode than there is the 720p mode. Obviously, that's going to come at the cost of some latency. However, for people flying 1080p 30, that is to be expected. It certainly isn't terrible. There's no major issues here in how it performs. So again, if you're someone who is looking to get into HD0 for wing use, for instance, or long range flying where you want that higher quality, the 1080p mode should suit you down to the ground. So, overall thoughts. For 1080p, I think this camera is fantastic. For 720p, it is very, very nice. Now, I'm really interested in knowing your thoughts on what you think about on this camera. Put any comments and questions below and I will try and answer them. I'm sorry I didn't have a lot more footage for you. This time of year, it is very challenging for me to be able to fly simply because of the weather. However, I literally got one day where I was able to get out in the morning and the afternoon to do some testing. And that's what you've seen here. As I've said, we're going to look at the Nano 90 a little bit later on. So if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Finally, I want to hear your thoughts, as I said below. And if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon in the description. We would not be able to keep making content on this channel without the support of the Patreons. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. I want to say a big thank you to HD Zero for sending these over. If you're interested in seeing more HD Zero content, there will be a video popping up at the end, and there is a dedicated playlist for HD Zero content as well. That's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.